Hey there, Night Owls. Welcome. Thank you for being here tonight and taking time out of your busy lives to chat with us. We're super excited. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Emma Nelson and I'm the publisher at Owl Hollow Press. Um, so I, tonight I'm talking about some things I've seen uh, behind the scenes as I work with different authors. Um, at the end of this um, session, we'll have a Q&A. So if you have questions along the way, feel free to put them in the in a comment or save them for the end, whichever. Um, Carrie, I forgot to mention, is handling the comments. So she'll be interacting with um, with those of you who are um, are interested in chatting with her. So um, Q&A at the end, if you have questions, just leave them in the chat along the way or do them at the end and Carrie will keep track of them either way. So um, like I said, we're excited to be here and we will just jump right in. So um, back in the day before founding Owl Hollow Press, I was a writer. I, um, I published a few things. I had a literary agent. I was super gung-ho about writing. I read all the craft books. Um, I was always trying to become better and smarter and faster at writing and always looking for the magic formula for, um, for writing success. And um, as most of you know, that, that doesn't exist. But now that I'm a publisher, I get to see the other side of that. Um, I get to take a step back and see, um, it's easier to see what good writers have in common and what they consistently do. So some writers will get lucky with, um, with a good idea or a great book. Um, and that's awesome. But in general, to have a sustainable career as a writer, there has to be certain um, foundations in place. And so I wanna talk about some of those um, tonight. I, I feel like good writers or good people who are good at anything take the time to find out what does and doesn't work for their own processes and um, what the common factors are and how they can always be improving. So that's what I wanna talk tonight about and I hope that it is helpful. Um, last night, my husband was randomly reading uh, Steinbeck quotes, um, and he read one that I thought was so perfect. It said, um, writers are a little below clowns and a little above trained seals. And my first instinct was to be offended because that's kind of insulting. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, actually, that's really genius. I love the image that as writers, we're trying to find the balance between um, new ideas and excitement and being entertaining and um, catching readers' attention with a great hook. And on the other side, being trained seals where we have to be, um, we have to have skills and we have to build our processes. And anyway, so I think it's a perfect combination and I'll refer to that a couple of times tonight. But, um, Tonight, um, I want to talk about three things that will hopefully um, help you find the balance between being fun and spontaneous as a writer, creative as a writer, but also um, having some structures in place that will make it a sustainable career instead of just um, something that, that's exciting and then fizzles out um, when it gets hard, because it does get hard. It's a hard career. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is having a beginner's mind in yoga there's this idea called the beginner's mind, and it's based on the idea that yoga is a practice. It's not a final destination. You're never, you never know everything and you're done learning. Um, how many people, even who have dabbled even remotely in yoga, have done a downward dog or child's pose? Everybody has, right? So when you have, when you have a beginner's mind, every time you do those, even though they're repetitious, they have a different outcome because your body feels different at different times or your mood is different or um, the environment is different. So potentially every time you do a downward dog, it could be a different experience. And that's what the beginner's mindset is within yoga is, um, is knowing that the journey is never done. The downward dog is never less important than the more um, advanced skill set because they're all part of the journey and part of being present in the moment. Um, I really like this for writing as well because the idea, like most of most of us who are writers, most of us who love the publishing world, are always looking for ways to improve. We we've all read Stephen King's on writing. We've all read The Staples. We follow YouTube videos of people who have done well. We want to know the keys to their success. So we all have kind of a learning mindset. But once we feel like we know it all, then we stop listening and we stop. Um, we stop noticing the small details, just like, 
just like in yoga. Um, so, so um, keeping a beginner's mind is helpful as, as writers um, because one, it keeps us from becoming a know-it-all. I feel like if you asked um, Stephen King or, um, I know I'm not supposed to talk about JK Rowling right now, but JK Rowling or anyone who's been in the business for a while, they'll say that they're always still learning, that every project is a new challenge and there's always something new that happens. So um, writing is a career that requires us to evolve with each new project. So having that beginner's mind is something that's super helpful and powerful for writers, especially. Um, it also allows us to see fresh possibilities um, no matter where we are in the journey. So um, it helps fire the neurons. It helps us make connections. It helps us see the world differently when we're reading a book and when we're writing a book and making those cool connections, which makes for great writers and great stories. Um, it also offers um, the opportunity, sorry, my dog's winding out the door, so I'm trying to ignore her. Um, it also allows you the opportunity to question and explore um, and be curious and keep the childlike energy that's so important for um, for writing, for keeping the newness of ideas alive. Um, one of the best examples that I can think of of the beginner's mind is a story that my aunt told. Um, she went to live in South America for a couple of years and when she got there, uh, she was commenting on the weather and the types of fruits and all the beautiful scenery and the things that were so different from any culture she had ever experienced. And her contact there said, if I could give you one piece of advice, it's this. For the first few months, take your camera everywhere because soon those things will be commonplace and you won't notice them anymore. Capture them while they're still exciting. Um, I love that quote because it applies to so many different things about life. But when we have a beginner's mind about writing, it's much easier to capture ideas that are still exciting and see new ones wherever we go. Um, and a few ways to do this that I found are um, use different mediums to inform your writing. Uh, if anyone listened to the Facebook Live last week, Colleen um, Sewell talked about being a painter and how that influences her books. Um, our, our author, Benjamin Sperdudo, I need to ask him how to say his last name, I never say it right, Sperdudo, he's a musician, he has a, he's in a band. So he sent a link to a soundtrack that he had made for his book that's coming out in a few months. And I love that his tone, it, it, that his music influences the tone and the mood of his book and vice versa. It was so fun to see that kind of medium come together. Um, another example, a lot of you know, know him, but one of the things I love about his work is he takes, he takes other people's work and other people's art and literally creates his own writing from a different medium. Some of it's still writing, some of it's art, but he's taking what already exists and creating his own writing. So just finding different ways for different mediums to influence what your stories are, I think is such a powerful um, tool in a lot of different ways. The other thing I would say is journal. Uh, I am not very good at it, but one thing I um, love about journaling is that your thoughts will change and your feelings will change. And we have these life-changing experiences that we think we'll never forget. But we do, we forget the small details, we forget the smells and the sounds and the um, what thoughts and feelings we had at the moment. So journaling is such a powerful way to keep those small details and pull them out later um, so, we can, so we can stay curious and make those connections later. Um, another one is take, take notes. I use my phone and just a note app and take notes when I see interesting people or eavesdrop on weird conversations, things that would be fun in stories. And in fact, yesterday I was going through some of my old notes and I found, I had totally forgotten about it, but about a year ago I was on a plane with a man who, if I had written him in a book, people would say that was over-exaggerated, he's a caricature, but just he was so over the top on every level. He was just over the sea and he was rude and grabby and sneezy. This was before COVID and loud. And I wrote down about him because he had so many quirks that were just perfect for characters. So things like that when you capture them. And like I said, I hadn't even remembered I'd written it. So it was fun to go back and, and recall that scenario. So taking notes and journal writing is such a great way to keep your, your beginner's mind alive. Um, the other thing, the last thing I'll say about the beginner's mind is um, always channel your inner five-year-old. 
we've all been around a kid that just asks why, why, why about everything or um, wants to know why, why the sky is blue and why things work the way they do. And um, it's sometimes obnoxious, but that's where the creativity comes from. Um, I think right now is a perfect example with COVID and there's so many weird things happening in the world that have never happened before, like um, like Hong Kong using tracking device devices for citizens or um, I know Trump talking about drinking bleach or schools having all these procedures in place that are kind of dystopian. So in all those scenarios, we can ask why, what is happening behind the scenes? What if this person was in this situation? So making those connections, again, firing your neurons with new scenarios in different ways is such a powerful way to bring, bring your own writing and scenes to life. Um, so the second foundation for creating um, a strong writer's life is um, don't fixate on perfect, but also don't do a crappy job. Um, I think this is a, this is one of the um, things that the Steinbeck quote reminds me of because I think it's such an interesting balance and and good writers do it really well. Um, for example, so many so many new writers spend countless hours researching their topic and reading craft books and all of that's great, but in moderation um, because the only way to get good at something is to do something. Um, I. Confidence comes from doing and seeing yourself succeed. It doesn't come from watching somebody else succeed. I, I like the example of sports because you would never see a football player sitting on the sidelines training by watching um, videos. You would, they, they replay scenes and they learn from those scenes, but for the most part, they're on the field. They're running the same drills over and over and over again. They're um, practicing over and over again so that when the big game comes, that is second nature to them. They're actually doing, and that's what gives them the confidence in the in the big game to make the plays they need to make and to make the decisions that they need to make on the on a split second. So um, it's the same when we're writer. We're, when we write, we sorry, we become more confident because we practice and know we can succeed. We get the confidence when we do, not when we learn from others. Um, the flip side to that is I think we live in a world where self publishing is easy. Uh, queer uh, agents and publishers and editors are just an email away. So it's really easy to just figure our work is good enough and send it off. Um, we, we see a lot of people who query that. I think the assumption is that we'll get excited about the idea and then our editor will spend time on it. But for the most part, that's not how it works. Um, if something's not ready, then the idea is lost in that. And so take some time and polish your work and don't fixate on perfection, but also get it as good as you can make it before you um, send it off. One of this, uh, one of the examples that I love the most is Walt Disney. Yes, I read this entire gigantic book. It's one of my favorites. It's 842 pages. Um, but he's fascinating because if you see, if you go to Disneyland now, you can tell you can tell what a perfectionist he is. He's all about the details. You walk down Main Street into the entrance, and and it just comes alive because of every single detail that's perfect. Um, but in the early days, like for literally decades, he was bankrupt. He was he had people that um, told him he wasn't smart enough or good enough or creative enough. He lost jobs because he wasn't good enough. Um, he he worked jobs he hated because he was trying to, to pay the bills, but then on all night long, he would spend in a shed um, working on prototypes. He was always staying up to date on technology, for example, to learn about animation, and he pioneered so many different things like that. So he was the perfect example of um, he never gave up. He was always learning, but if he had never finished anything, if he'd never completed projects, he wouldn't have gotten anywhere. But also, if he hadn't kept in mind the quality that he wanted, that he was always striving for something awesome, then he wouldn't have gotten there either. So he, to me, is a great balance of practicing and persevering, but also polishing. Don't don't get lazy just because it's hard work to write a book. That doesn't mean you don't get to don't have to spend time editing it. So find that balance between um, perfection and um, and just moving forward, finding progress, perfection and progress, find that balance. Um, so what I would say, my, my tips for doing that are 
Practice as often as you can. Writing doesn't have to be destined for publication. Write for fun, write to explore different ideas, write to play, write just for yourself. Um, as you improve, so will your confidence in your um, ability and your self as a writer. Um, one of the, uh, there's all kinds of examples, but one of the authors I really like is Brandon Sanderson, who wrote probably, I think he wrote 10 full novels before he got one that was picked up. And you'll find those authors everywhere that they seem like they were successful overnight, but really they had put in a lot of effort for years before, before they were published. Um, the second thing I would say is learn to finish things. It's easy to start when something's fun and exciting, um, but finishing is is a skill set you have to learn, and that's something that brings confidence too. There's nothing like typing the end on a project to motivate you to start the next project. It's just something that um, makes it exciting, it keeps it new, but also it trains you to be able to, to finalize projects and succeed at something. Um, so the final thing is learn to edit. We focus so much on writing as a skill, and it is, but so many books are made and lost in the editing stage. Um, it's not always fun or glamorous, but it is where the magic happens. We've seen it over and over and over again. Um, so for yourself, find the right mix of learning and doing and progressing and watch it come together. So don't fix off, fixate so much on perfection that you don't move forward but don't be so eager to move forward that you're not putting out the best of work that you can, that you can put out. And um, the final, the final point I would make is, um, and this one I feel really strongly about, get better in one small way every single day. Um, writing both as a newbie and a seasoned writer or as a parent or in your career, if you have a day job or anything else, you, the joy is in becoming a little bit better every day. Um, think of how many times you've planned to write a book. Have you finished it? Have you not started because it seems overwhelming? Um, did, um, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, one thing I like to do is, my kid dropped food on it, is do a ladder. Um, this really helps me visually. So I put my goal at the top of the ladder. That's what I'm climbing toward, right? Is my goal right there. And then I do the small steps to, to get there. So when I say write a book, is that overwhelming? It absolutely is. When I say um, brainstorm ideas, is that hard? It's not even hard. That one I can do in 20 minutes, a couple days a week. So, so finding those little ways to start small and give yourself a win will be huge in your overall ability to do things for the long term. Um, a few things I would say is um, when you when you set goals for yourselves, then your goals become a plan instead of just a dream. And that's one of the one of the things that I think separates the real, the, not real, but the authors from those who want to be writers is they make a plan and they stick to it. Um, so here are a few little things that I think are helpful um, in sticking to a plan. I know motivation isn't always um, in easy supply and writing seems like it's not as important as family and keeping up the house and everything else you have going on. But if, if it's something that you really wanna do, you have to be honest with yourself and give yourself space for that. Um, so my first one is make space to create, put it on your calendar and don't just assume you'll get around to it. Set a time, set a place, um, cl clear out a room if you have to, give yourself 20 minutes an hour every day and, and make something happen every day. Um, the second one, call yourself an author. How many of us are living in the closet as writers? We, we know we wanna do it, but we're not taken seriously. So we just, we just hide it and we'll, we figure we'll tell people when we are finally successful. But um, call yourself a writer and make it a normal part of your life. Normalizing your dreams and the things you want to have happen um, will make it easier to make that transition and to give it the time it deserves. Um, when you make it a when you make it a regular part of your life, it allows you to move, move past the idea that you're stealing time away from other things. This is your life. It's your daily routine because you are a writer. So make it a priority. Um, the third one is just pick one thing every day. It can be super small and whatever. You can de define that however you want. It can be weekends. It can be every single day. But um, 
don't go crazy. There, the one exception, I love things like NaNoWriMo. For those of you who don't know, it's National Novel Writing Month, where you have 30 days to write 50,000 words. Stuff like that I think is so fun because it's a good Kickstarter. But for a lot of people, that's overwhelming. Um, so do one small thing every day. Plan a realistic, manageable goal um, that you can do. It can be as easy as brainstorming or finishing an outline. It doesn't matter what it is, but again, if you give that self, give that win to yourself, you build confidence, you build momentum, and you're you're able to keep going. Um, set a routine. Um, there's so many author rituals out there that are fun to read about. Like Stephen King has his daily, like same time of day. He grabs his tea. He grabs his vitamins. He shuts his door. He has his daily word count, and that's what he does every single day. And we all know how many books he's written. Um, some others are Josh Roberts, who's the author of The Witches of Willow Cove. I always am impressed when he t he tweets at 5 a.m. that he's um, he's with the 5 a.m. Writers Club. Does anyone want to get up at 5 a.m.? No. But instead of saying, I don't have time to be a writer, he's making space to be a writer. He's making space for his dreams. And I admire that and I love watching it. Um, Darby Karchit, for example, started writing when she was a teacher and she would spend every lunch break writing a little bit on her novel. She wouldn't get a lot done, but it was progress every single day. And she had that routine at lunchtime. Um, one thing I loved lately was Ash Ashley Cowles um, put a post uh, picture on Instagram with her brand newborn baby sleeping on one shoulder and her laptop. And she that's the time she has to write. She's a mom. We all have hard things in life, but that's what's realistic for her is a baby on one shoulder and her laptop on her lap. And that's how she's going to write her next book. And I love that. I admire that. Um, the, the last one I thought was interesting is Maya Angelou. Um, every time she wrote a book, she just rented a hotel in town and would go there and stay and work every day until it was done. And obviously that's not, um, that's not reasonable for all of us to do. But the point is with, with whatever you have, you can make adjustments to make it a priority. Um, and you'll find your own process. That's what's exciting. Like you can learn from all of the authors in the world what they're doing and they might not, all, they maybe none of them work for you. You'll find what works for you and that will be exciting and empowering and you'll do it over and over again. And that's what will lead to success. Um, uh, one more, well, there's a couple more. One that I think is really important is ask yourself, what do I want out of being a writer? And what would happen if I received that? Um, so why do I want to be a writer? Do I want my voice out there? Do I just enjoy it? What is in it for me? And if I, if I succeed, if I sell a book, are we going to take the family to Disneyland? What does that mean for me? I think having a big picture that you can focus on and be excited about is huge in motivating yourself to do the little things to move forward. Um, so I, I would just, and that's going to be, again, be different for everyone, but know your big picture, know your why. Um, and part of that is some authors go all in on one thing, like um, Nicole Conway, if you look up her um, author profile, she's got, I don't know, 20 dragon books. She is all in on the dragons and she's an expert on dragons and military flight and that kind of thing. It's, it's super impressive. Um, you got Darby, who is our in-house horse expert. You've got um, John Grisham, who has written everything he knows about being a lawyer. So you have people who have very specific um, niches where they work, but then you also have people like Neil Gaiman, who writes dark fantasy and children's books and comic books. So e either way can work, but you have to know what your goals are and what you are excited about doing and where you, where you want it to lead you. And the importance of that is once you start getting Maybe if you're just starting out, it feels like you'll never get a foothold in the industry, but you will. And it will start to, people will start to offer you opportunities. And when you know exactly what you want, you can adjust your life to accept those opportunities. But if it's not in line with where you're heading, you can feel better about saying, I don't have time for that, or I'm not willing to give up my writing time for your project type thing. So knowing where you're going from the beginning, I think is a huge um, benefit and a huge motivator for getting, um, getting going. The other thing I'd say is every month, look at your goals. Um, are they working for you? Do you like the routine you have? Is, are there adjustments that you need to be making? What works, what doesn't work? If it works, great, lean into that. If it doesn't work, drop it and try something else. 
Um, you don't have to stick to something forever. Well, you do have to stick to the part, the parts that are the goals, but you can tweak how, how you get there. Um, the, the final thing I would say, don't worry about what anyone else is doing. There's always going to be someone more successful. There's always going to be people who have different dreams than you do. You're not responsible for them. Don't worry about them. Worry about you and where you are and where you want to be. Um, I think, I think with anything in life, we're always looking for the magic formula. We want to know how people are successful, what they do to get there. Um, but the only magic honestly is showing up day after day, writing the words, making progress one step at a time. Um, and doing the tiny things um, will be your superpower. That's showing up as your superpower. That's what's going to get you to the next level. Um, Zig Ziglar has a quote that I really like. He says, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. And I'm not here to judge people who don't shower every day. I'm not raising hands or anything. But I'm saying the point is nothing lasts every day. Nothing is guaranteed. We, we just keep working at it because that's what matters to us. And I think the small steps are what helps you get the bigger motivation for the bigger things. So just baby steps, give yourself time and, and patience as you adjust and um, make a tiny step every single day. So um, I think if you think about writing as um, something that's part of who you are, and that's who you define yourself as, you'll do it intentionally instead of just burst here and there as you wait for the right moment or the right idea or whatever else. Just make it who you are if that's what you want to be. Um, so just as a, as a recap, um, be powerful and successful by maintaining a beginner's mindset. Always be open to, to new ideas and always be learning um, to um, find the right balance between progress and perfection. Don't get caught in either of them. You have to find the balance. And three, Get better in a small way every single day. You've got this and um, and everybody's at a different part in the journey and that's what makes it exciting and fun. So um, I'd love to hear your, it, I'd love to hear in the comments what things you're doing, what things you have found as a writer um, or a creative type that helps you make that progress. What are your little things that you do every day or, or however often that motivate you and keep you excited about the, the journey? And if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them and we'd love to chat with you in the comments for a minute. So, Carrie, anything? Sorry, I don't know why. I, oh, there you are. I can't see comments. Oh, hi. It's fun to see who's here now. <laughs> Nicole Conway says, my motivation comes in hot bean water form. I love that. <laughs> Oh, so Darby makes a great comment. And Kimberly, um, interacting with others. I actually had that on my list and then I cut it. Um, there's a quote about up it, about you are a combination of the five people you hang around with. Um, that's not exactly how the quote goes. But um, find your people. It, it's hard at first when you're just starting. And you'll find some people that are negative and not, not worth cultivating. But if you could find five people that were the kind of people you wanted to be around professionally and who motivate you and keep you excited, find those people in your life. They're out there. There are so many good people. I'm convinced that writers and readers are the best community on earth. So I, I agree with that, Nicole and Darby. Hi, Sharon. So fun to see people. Uh, okay, Darby says, it feels wrong to celebrate milestones as the work itself should be the reward. I love that. I I agree. I, I love writing. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. You can always um, go a different way. If it's boring you, it's going to bore the reader. Um, so I agree with that. But I also think if, if it's not, like if you really want it and it's not just coming naturally, then, then find your ways. That's Find your ways to reward yourself. I agree that that's one of those things that's individual to every person. Okay, Nicole Conway says, um, oh, awesome. I was told if you want writing to be a job someday, then you need to treat it like a job right now and have a schedule for yourself. Great advice that changed my work ethic. And I will say about Nicole, like, so she's listed as Ashley Nicole Conway. She writes as Nicole Conway. I have seen very few people that put out as much work as Nicole does. She has books coming out all the time. I don't know if you guys know, but she designed the cover for 
these wicked waters. Um, she's extremely talented designing and writing and I, I don't even know how she puts out as much content as she does. So if, if you want advice, that's probably some good, a good person to follow. Um, oh, interesting. Um, if you want to find good storytellers, find a local D and D group, Dungeons and Dragons. I think that's really fun. Um, they may not write, but the characters and stories they come up with, man, so much creative talent. You know what? I, this is kind of another random tip, but I recently bought a role-playing game. My, my kids and husband are super into video games and I'm, I'm not, but I bought a role-playing game because of the same idea, um, that we, um, that they're, they're so great with creativity and storytelling and character building. And so we, um, anyway, that's something I've been using with, with thinking about characters. So that's a great idea, Nicole. Um, Mariah, how do you come up with ideas that you know your audience will like? <laughs> so there's some different theories about that. Um, it's called writing to market or writing for yourself. I think it depends on what, what you want. A lot of people say, write what you love and if nobody, and you'll find your people that respond to it. Or there's other people that say, this is what's popular right now. I'm going to write that and I'm going to sell it. Um, so it's, I think it's kind of a business decision, but there are ways um, to follow trends to see what, you know, on Amazon, you can always go see what's trending. You can see what's on the bestseller list. I, I don't know if it's still big, but for a long time it was shifter romances. So werewolves and, um, and other things. So and, and, and there was a big um, push of um, like boarding school romances or kind of Hogwarts style. So trends come and go, you can watch those. Um, but, but I would say just find what you're excited about and passionate about and write that. And a lot of times um, other people will be passionate about it too. Oh, good. Darby, reading outside of my genre really helps stretch my writing chops. I love that. I think, I think that answers your question too, Mariah. How do you come up with ideas? Um, I feel like the more you read and the more you, I, I'm a huge fan of movies. I love watching movies. I think the more you take in good story, the more it triggers your neurons and you're firing and you're saying, well, what about this? Well, what about this? And then you have these weird um, mashup ideas of, I don't know, aliens and knights in shining armor, things that don't really seem like they go together. But when you're consuming a lot of stories, they kind of click and, and make you think of new of new ways to put them together. Vampires, yes. Van are, are vampires making a comeback now that Stephanie Meyer released her new book? I don't even know. Um, earlier questions from Darby. What media most closely parallels writing? And how do you know when your work is polished enough? Those are good questions. Those are hard. Okay, I honestly don't know what most closely parallels writing. Um, I, I would probably say m movies. Does that count? They have writers too. Maybe that's the same thing. Um, I don't know. Video games. I've I don't play video games, but I've started watching some of them. They have really good stories. Um, anything that tells a story, I think. Um, I don't know. That's a terrible answer. I don't know, Darby. You're smarter than I am. Um, how do you know when your work is polished enough? Um, so I recommend going through it two or three times on your own. Finish, I'm a fan of writing fast and then spend your time editing and, and polishing two or three times and then find readers who can give you feedback after you've polished it. And then once they give you feedback, then you polish it some more. So I would say when you feel like you have a really solid story that you can't do anything to make better and you've already asked for feedback, then you're ready. We get, we get a lot of people who send first drafts and not only are they messy from a, from a, a mechanics standpoint, but they're messy from a story standpoint. When your story is tightly plotted, great character arcs, there's a huge difference between somebody who's put in the effort with that, either outlining or revising or both versus somebody who just kind of puts down what's in their head. So that's what I would say about that. Uh, Candace. Oh, Ash Ashley, I'm with you on that Buffy the Vampire. Totally, totally on board with that. Um, Candace, um, Aaron Morgenstern had a great writing parallel with video games in the Starless Sea. Highly recommend. Okay, that's awesome. Um, thank you. 
Um, also, I would say I I heard Brandon Sanderson talk at a um, team conference where he compared it to video games and um, and leveling up. Like every time you practice and every time you learn, you're you're leveling up. So I think that's a fun visual too. Is um, for those of you, if any of you are video gamers. Yay, Buffy. So basically what I've learned today is we need to have a Buffy fan club. That's that's what I'm getting out of all of this. <laughs> uh, any other questions that I missed or I'm, I feel like all of you are smart ladies and probably have so much more. Oh, I joined a lo uh, Sheila says I joined a local writers group and we meet virtually now. I, I think that's amazing. I um, I think writers groups are so important. I could do a whole thing on those. I think they make all the difference in your writing and just having people to talk to about a journey that's kind of sad and hard sometimes. Sharon, hello. Did I miss anything? Um, anyway, I, oh, I'm on, Hannah says I'm on Team Spike. Oh, hi, Joe. Joe Schaefer is awesome and she is a Buffy fan too. So clearly, clear, oh, and Supernatural, yes. I think we need to have a fan club for Buffy and Supernatural. Um, great critiques and feedback, yes. Um, yeah, you guys are so smart. I feel like all of you should should be teaching this. You are all brilliant women. Any anything? Oh, games are also great for teaching cadence for a story, action, revolution, etc. There's a rhythm to a story, and it's more obvious in games because well, the action scenes may kill you. I th I think that's so true. You know what, Ashley, I think that you should do one of these on video games and what you learn from them if you want. Because I think, um, like I said, my, my husband plays them a lot and he'll tell me the story points of them. And they are really, really well done. They have great storytellers that craft these worlds, some of them. Anyway, I, I think that that would be an amazing topic by itself, that and Buffy. Um, anyone else? I'm on Team Spike, Buffy. Okay, so next week we'll have our Buffy fan group. And anyway, I, um, oh, oh, oh. And next week we are going to have our um, book club. So I we're gonna be share, oh, what, Carrie says I missed one of Darby's questions. Dragon Age, the best games I've made. Okay, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, did I, did I miss a Darby question? Carrie says I did. Um, okay, Darby, you know where to find me, and you're smarter than I am, so I'm not too worried about it. But next week, we're having our Scales Book Club. We're super excited about it. Um, we're going to be talking about dragons, and we have some fun things planned. And also, um, if you missed it last time, sorry, I should have grabbed this before. Here's our beautiful sequel that's coming out next week. So it's a big week for the dragon lovers next week. We're really excited about both. Um, but, but yeah, if you haven't, if you haven't started reading this, start reading it because we're going to be talking about it next week. And, um, yep, yeah, there's your boy, Koji. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for coming. Again, I think writers and readers are the best people and you guys are so much fun and you have such smart, um, smart questions and smart answers. And I am grateful you are all here tonight. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. And we're excited next week to talk all about scales and we will see you soon. Bye. Subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss an upload or join us live every Thursday for author interviews, book clubs, writing advice, and more on Facebook at Owl Hollow Press, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. See you Thursday.